So from my little boy's stand, uh, standpoint, he was, um, he was just my grandfather, right? So kids don't really think in comparing people. He was short, he wore a suit, he smelled of cigars and whiskey. He, in several of the pictures I have of him from my childhood, he's wearing sunglasses indoors. I don't know what the deal was with that. Um, but I do remember looking into his bright eyes, and so he must not have always been wearing sunglasses into it. I think that may have been a later phenomenon. Um, he was ancient to me. Of course, now both my parents are well older than he was when he passed away. Um, but he seemed ancient to me when I was little. And um, Harry, and um, he was uh, energetic, so loving towards, he's so delighted in his grandchildren. He, my existence was just a source of delight to him. And so, of course, I loved being with him. Um, and the whiskey smell or the cigar smell is no barrier. I would get on his lap and he would tell me stories. And, you know, it's just wonderful. He was just a wonderful, wonderful grandfather to have. The other thing was he took children very seriously. And so he would talk to you like a person. And when you were four or when you're eight or whatever it was, he would talk to you um, like if he was interested in what you had to say. Uh, he, would, he would argue his point with you too. I mean, so it was like you could have a real conversation in a way that a lot of people don't, um, I think, you know, across that span of years. He had four fingers on his left hand. That's another striking thing when you're a child. And he was such a storyteller. So I would say, Zadie, what happened? Why do you only have four fingers? And every time I asked him, he would tell me a different story. So one time he would say, oh, I was working in the fields. You know, I grew up in a, you know, a very rural place and I was working in the fields and I was uh, using a pitchfork to shovel some hay and I dropped the pitchfork and it just cut my finger clean off. And I don't remember the other stories, but I think one time he told me that an animal had, had attacked him and eaten his finger. Um, and I didn't know. I never knew until, I think until after he died, I never really knew why he had lost his finger. And actually the, the way he lost his finger was, was also Taka interesting, um, right? He lost his finger because he was a dentist. And he used to hold the x-ray film in his patient's mouth with one hand and take the x-ray with the other. And so this hand would get exposed to the x-rays. And he got cancer in his fingers. And, you know, people didn't know that x-rays were carcinogenic when they first came out. And so he got cancer and then he had to have surgeries and eventually got it uh, amputated. And, um, you know, to someone who now you know, a dental office is also, you know, you've got these big machines with the long arms and then they either, they, they put lead on you and they leave and the idea of someone sort of holding it in and taking the thing, you know, that's kind of cool, that's kind of interesting, you know, that's how they used to do it. Um, it's like my mother saying as a child that she used to put her, at the shoe store, she used to put her foot under an x-ray to see what the bones, how the bones of her feet fit inside the shoe. And they had these in shoe stores all the time, and people whenever we went shopping for shoes, people, or just for the fun of it, people would put their foot under the x-rays um, to see what their bones looked like. So he was, he was a storyteller, and you could always count on him to say something interesting. Um, and so that's, you know, again, it was, um, it was that connection through the words that, um, that I remember him more than, yeah, I mean, I've got pictures of him. I know what his physical form looked like. He wasn't much to look at, I guess, 